today's going to be fun. Um, uh, unless you're taking notes, I would say close the laptops. They're, they're probably going to stay closed until after lunch. Um, this is, uh, this is going to be a fun day. Um, I'm Andy Cochran from Murata. We also have Eddie Offerman from Murata. Uh, Mike Marquan went to the wrong Olympic Boulevard and is currently racing this way. Um, he's, uh, he's with us as well. And where's Jamie back there? Jamie is a friend of the studio. Um, uh, our composite, you all saw, Andrew Ashton was supposed to be here today. He's in Canada supervising a shoot. Um, so a uh, huge, huge thank you to, uh, to Jamie for coming in. And uh, he's going to be helping out with the, the After Effects component that uh, Andrew Ashton was going to be covering. Um, so really fast, I'm sure you know it. Um, and if you don't, just in case. Um, Murata, what we are is we're sort of a multifaceted uh, creative studio. Um, we do a lot of different things. These are you know, some of the things we've done. Um, we work in basically every medium, um, tons of commercials, a little bit of film, a little bit of TV, print, uh, music videos. But then on the digital and interactive side, we do obviously VR, that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, AR, uh, installations, exhibits, apps, mobile tablet, web. Um, we've got, you know, kind of a, a pretty wide um, uh, sort of area of interest. But Throughout it all, it's pretty simple. We approach everything, we approach a commercial the same way as we do VR. It's technology and design to tell stories, and that's it. Um, and so uh, we don't have divisions, we don't have departments. Um, every single person at Murata works in VR, every single person at Murata works you know, in a commercial. So um, we, we've sort of been working in VR for about three years. We started when the first Oculus Rift, uh, the Kickstarter came out, um, and we basically researched capability so today is going to be talking about, um, it's, it's not really, this is not the Murata ethos necessarily, so much as, um, you know, hopefully it should be the ethos in terms of approaching this stuff, how to think about VR. Um, I don't think that there's any secret sauce to this in terms of like, this is, this is the, you know, the Pixar 22 keys to story. You know, this, this is a much broader understanding of how to make this, uh, this kind of entertainment. And the joy is it applies to a lot of different things. Um, you know, everything that we're talking about today, could th this sort of way of ideating and approaching creative works for a commercial. It works for a feature film. It works for AR. Um, it's just a, a way of kind of uh, approaching stuff. So, um, so what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to, this is going to be as creative focused as possible. Um, we will talk about tech, but our goal with the tech is not for this to be a big tutorial hands-on workshop but rather a here's where to go, here's enough information to get started, here's you know, how these plugins work, here's the basic gist of how to work in post from edit through kind of effects and finishing, but it's not gonna be compositing 101, this is not a VFX class, this is not an editing class, um, it's more just giving you the tools so that you can then hopefully go and, and, and know where to look next. Um, what, to, what, to search for, uh, <laughs> what to search for on Google? Um, <laughs> So, um, so it's a, it, this is going to be a workshop. It's going to be very hands-on. Um, it's going to be very participatory. We're going to be breaking you guys into groups. We're going to be having everyone kind of uh, working together the entire day. Um, we're going to basically, if you look at the schedule, we're going to kind of, you know, right now just talking about sort of the general approach of how to think about this stuff. Um, and then we're going to break into groups, and each group is basically going to come up with an idea for something that you want to film today. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's basically, it does not have to be a great idea. It just has to be an idea that the group can be okay with and everyone's, nobody's super passionately against it um, because it's about process. It's not about result. This is not a class where we're going to end up with, you know, amazing stuff. This is all about the process. So work as a group, you know, and we'll be here. We'll be working. Each one of us will be with one of the groups. So we'll be in there with you. Um, and then we are going to talk about blocking and staging and pre-production. We're going to shoot. Um, each group is going to go one at a time. Uh, we may pull people. Uh, I'll take a survey in a second um, to, uh, th it'll make sense in a second, but uh, we may pull people. You may end up being in multiple videos. Again, it's not about reacting. It's not about how fast you can write something. This is not a 48 hour film fest. This is not a game jam. This is not, there's no judging. There's nothing. In, f in fact, one or more of these these videos that we do today is probably going to fail horrifically, um, but that's a, that's a learning moment. That's, that's what we're focusing on is why did that fail? So no judgments, and, and there's cameras, but no, <laughs> no, 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 no judgments. Um, 
you know, this is the, this should be a very supporting place, um, and uh, nobody should be have to do some things today that they don't want to do and that they're not comfortable with. There's enough people in this room, and we're here that if you know, if you don't want to act, if you don't want to write, if you don't want to help block, if you don't want to do whatever, don't worry. Um, you're not going to be forced to do anything you don't want to do. Um, and then we'll get through post. We'll talk about editing after lunch, and we'll and then we'll talk about sort of compositing and After Effects, and just sort of um, we'll keep it pretty high level. Um, so. What this is not, obviously, we're not, we are gonna be making garbage today. It is, it is at best going to be a rehearsal video, at best. Uh, it, it will be something that was written by a group that just met in about half an hour, performed by the same, those same people. Uh, it, it, this is going to be terrible, terrible, terrible. It's about the process, so just keep your eyes off the result. Um, likewise, if anybody, if anybody came today with an idea that they were really hoping to workshop, put it in the car. Um, th th this is a group exercise. Come open-minded, work together. Don't, don't use this today as a way of like getting your, your feature via VR project workshopped by a bunch of strangers. Um, you go with the flow. Don't fight it. Don't try and steer it. Um, it you know, it's, it's, all about, it's all about working together. Um, so really fast, um, just to kind of get a lay of the land of who we've got today. How many people, it, this is sort of what you would consider your primary talent. How many people are writers? Awesome. Cool. Uh, so you two, just so you know, should probably split up so that we've got a writer in, in each group. Um, uh, so many directors? Pretty good. I think we're, okay, we're cool. Um, this group only has one, so maybe a group that, I think you guys had two or three, maybe somebody kind of comes over here when we break up. Um, uh, actors? We got one back, awesome. Ish, 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 awesome. Willing to act? Eh, okay, we got some in every group. Okay, cool. Um, again, it's, nobody's gonna be judged on their acting talent. Um, producer, kind of, oh, lots, perfect. Uh, DPs, um, your, your talents will be not used today. Uh, we're, sh <laughs> we're shooting on a Rico Theta. Um, if we're not lighting, we're not, there's no props, there's no, like these are, these are gonna be, you know, like, it's like an acting work, uh, workshop. Um, and uh, editors, post VFX, um, awesome, pretty well spread out. And then like pure technician, developer, coder, um, awesome. Okay, we're pretty well spread out. Cool. Um, the folks that are willing to act, you may end up being in multiples. Um, and if people are really not comfortable with that, we'll jump in and help as well. Um, okay, um, we already kind of talked about, we're gonna be working in groups. Um, it, in a little bit, we'll break into those groups and everybody should introduce and start kind of uh, getting to know each other. Um, and as I said, th today, our hope is that you guys go home w like inspired to make something with enough knowledge to know the steps that you're not lost in terms of knowing where to start. Um, so that's, that's hopefully our, our success today. Um, so really fast uh, because these ter terms can be so sticky and we can spend too much time arguing over minutia. Um, so VR, uh, when, when, we, when we're talking about VR, what are we talking about? There's, there's basically, when people say VR and they're talking about anything that involves live action, they're basically talking about one of three things. They're talking about 360 video, they're talking about immersive cinema, or they're talking about true VR. Um, and today, we're, we're kind of focusing on immersive cinema, but, and I'll define them in a second, um, but the creative process we're talking about applies um, across all VR, including more game engine driven real time stuff. Um, so 360 video, um, the derogatory term for this is placing cameras. Um, 360 video is basically a camera that shoots in 360 degrees filming something. Um, there's no inherent narrative necessarily. You know, um, a lot of, um, a lot of uh, journalism is 360 video. A lot of the stuff you see out of like, um, like Riot, New York Times, Verse, um, uh, they obviously, they, they traipse into what I would define as immersive cinema in terms of adding narration and, and a little bit more of a narrative. But if it's just a camera, if, if somebody hires you to take a GoPro ball to Tibet and you just kind of put it in various interesting places, that's 360 degree video. Um, we're, we're interested in immersive cinema. The only difference is intent. With immersive cinema, you're trying to create an experience. So it's not about showing something, it's about creating an experience for the, the viewer, and we're gonna come back to that a lot. Um, the problem, because it's predominantly video-based, 
Um, it's usually not interactive. Um, you'll, hear the, you'll hear the term agency thrown around a lot. Um, that basically just means the ability to do something, the ability to act. If it's just a, a video sphere and it's not interactive, then you have very little agency. The only agency you have is the ability to choose where to look. Um, likewise, uh, you'll hear presence thrown around a lot. Um, you know, presence is that sense of immersion, that sense of I am in this scene. Um, immersive cinema can give people a sense of, of presence, um, but it's, it's an uphill climb for, for a, a non-interactive video. Um, and then true VR is where you're adding interactivity um, or, or some form of reactivity. Uh, the immersion level goes up. When you're dealing with video, your audience can't touch it, they can't move around. There's a ton of really nerdy stuff you can do on the back end to add sort of multiple choice or graphics over the top, some form of interactivity um, or invisibly reactivity where the video changes based on what they're doing or sections of it pause, things like that. We're not gonna be talking about that because that's like a month long intensive course um, on all the stuff you can do. So we're gonna try and stay in that middle spot today, the immersive cinema, which is we're not just placing a camera and recording something, we're trying to tell a story. Um, so that takes us to that term, storytelling. Um, uh, this storytelling is, doesn't apply to VR because you're not telling anything. You're creating an experience. So the word storytelling is actually completely broken for what, uh, what we're talking about. We call them immersive narratives, um, immersive cinema, um, you know, experience. Um, it's, it's not about sort of a director's vision and showing the audience exactly what you want. It's, it's about creating an experience for them um, and, and, and sort of letting them into it. Um, so we're talking live action. Again, there's pre-rendered CG in real time. We're trying to kind of stay today on live action, um, uh, sort of immersive cinema. Um, in that situation, the camera literally is the audience. When the audience puts on the headset, they are going to be exactly where your camera is. Um, so it has to involve them. You have to be creating a narrative in which the camera, it doesn't have to be the protagonist, it doesn't have to be the antagonist, it, it doesn't have to be the star, but it has to be involved. The camera absolutely must be considered because the audience is, they're literally the most important thing in your story. It's not your location, your props, your, your actors, your amazing story, it's the camera, it's the guest, the, 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 the um, you know, the, 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 the audience that you have teleported one at a time into your story. Um, so because of that, um, we kind of, we, we sort of talk about these things in terms of, we use, um, you know, analogies like haunted houses, um, it, you know, uh, there's a lot of sort of like game design, level design that goes into the thinking. Um, there's a lot of uh, immersive theater, if anyone's done uh, Delusion here in LA or Sleep No More in New York or any of the other sort of immersive theater experiences, then you know how that goes, um, and you know, in an amusement park. Um, these are the sorts of thinking that is more analogous to this than cinematography, directing, writing, TV, film, even game design to a large degree. Um, your, your audience is, is literally there, and so as a creator, as a storyteller, you need to decide what experience that camera is going to have. Most 360 video is this, where you make the audience the third wheel. Um, you're basically teleporting them into an awesome place that you, the creator, got to be at, and all of your actors got to be at, and then you completely ignore them. And it's essentially the, it's, it's like a simulator of being invited to a party where you don't know anyone, you don't know what's happening, you've never been there before, and everyone ignored you the whole time you were there. Like, that's not virtual reality. That's not, a, that's not a, a, an experience that we should be simulating. Um, so when you're telling these stories, it's, it's all about the camera, you know, it, like you need to tell your audience, where are you? What can you or can't you do? You know, uh, what, who are these people? What is going on? And that doesn't mean that you have to front load expo exposition at the head. It means you have to take cues from things like amusement parks. Um, Star Tours, if you've been on it, Star Tours is a, a couple minutes long. But it's actually the entire line, and actually Disney's great at this, the, ent the entire hour that you were in line was actually the prologue. It, and it was telling you who you were, it was telling you your character. Um, amusement parks are great at sort of that onboarding, 
telling you sort of like, you're in a secret base. You know, th th there's a you know, rebel mission. We're trying to get you out of here. So you need to, you need to actually have that, that cap on of every single person that watches your, your, your VR film has instantaneously transported into the middle of the scene with no knowledge of what's going on. So you need to actually completely change the way you're telling these stories. You need to actually help them understand what's going on. Um, you need to understand that they're very confused, very lost. Um, I want to show this video. It kind of is on topic, kind of isn't. But um, has anyone ever seen um, uh, Thank God You're Here? It's a, it's a TV show. It's brilliant. They get a, uh, a, 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 an actor, who, you know, usually somebody famous, with some improv chops. They put them in a costume. So their only clue as to what it, the, the scene that they're about to walk into is the costume they're wearing. So this is Jason Alexander. He's going to go through that door. Um, he's wearing like a Star Trek kind of outfit. Um, and uh, I just wanted to kind of show this because he's the audience. Obviously, he's a great improviser. He's interacting. So there's a little bit of fuzziness here. But this is, this is what you're doing to your audience. <laughs> Captain, thank God you're here. He's back, everyone. Welcome, Captain, Captain welcome. <laughs> Congratulations, Captain. Thanks. The first human to set foot on the planet Obak. That was the one right there. <laughs> Obak! That's how it is. <laughs> Captain, what was their atmosphere like? Well, it was interesting. It was interesting. It was not quite suitable for human consumption, but it did get me higher than a kite, so I'm happy to be back with you particularly. <laughs> Captain, what if it's inhabitants? How did their language sound? Uh, a little bit like this. Hey, how you doing? Good to see you. Aren't you the guy from Seinfeld? Aren't you? It's kind of like that. And... Captain. Yes, oh, sorry. Didn't well, feel you back there. Oh. That's probably not good, oh. right? No. As you were, as you were! Captain, what were those blue flashing balls? <laughs> I didn't realize they were flashing, I'm sorry. Um, I, so I show that because the, the, the conceit of that is your actor is going in totally blind. They don't know the scene they're walking in, the characters. These are talented improvisers. Obviously, they can in interact. They're part of the story. But that's what you're doing to your audience. You're, they're literally, when they put on the headset and you know, they open the door, and they're all of a sudden on the bridge of a ship with, filled with people they've never seen before, characters they've never seen before, um, you know, doing things that they don't understand. So. This is a different kind of telling stories. It's not a camera that sees in every direction. It's a fundamentally different approach to storytelling. Um, the audience is the most important thing. I don't, like literally, it doesn't matter how long your career has been, how awesome a shot you've got planned in your head, how you know, incredible your lighting's gonna be, the incredible dialogue you've written. Literally none of that matters if the audience is not more important than those things. Um, and so that's what we're gonna be focusing on today. Audience first thinking, th putting yourself in their shoes, creating a, a, uh, a narrative which immediately explains to people who they are, what they can do, what's going on, you know, um, what this story is. And there's a very selfish reason as creators for that because then they're not, wasting you, they're not wasting the time that they could be enjoying it trying to figure it out. You need to get them to understand what, what is going on as fast as possible so that they can enjoy your lighting and your great dialogue and your amazing props and your incredible you know, uh, film that you've created. Um, so this is where we kind of get to the, uh, the beginning of breaking into groups. Um, so I've got a couple ideas, but um, I think we should, we should throw some stuff out. Um, I want to I wanna get some ideas from you guys. if. You don't have enough, I'll throw some out, but um, we want to talk about who is the camera. Like, what types of, of uh, characters could a VR camera be? Um, I'll throw one out, it's the easiest one. A ghost. The camera could be a ghost. It has no presence, no agency, it's just observing, but that is a character. It is a dead person. 
Um, and so your story can kind of you know, revolve around that. Does anybody have any, anything they want to throw out? I can keep throwing it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Diving Bell and the Butterfly. Yep. That's actually, that's the third one over. Yep. Uh, uh, an invalid. Somebody who is, uh, somebody who is incapacitated, but, but mentally present. Anybody else? Perfect. Yeah, exactly. Um, like a an observer, maybe is that? Yeah, like uh, we could say like investigator, sort of. Yeah. There you go. Yep. That's. Let me uh, let me write some of these down. Let me see if it'll let me. Will it let me? All right. So we've got. Uh, We've got an invalid, we've got a detective, we've got, I'm gonna say an invisible, which could, cause it could be, it could be overweight, it could be a wallflower, it could be an undesirable in India, it could be, you know, some, some sort of, um, I'm just, just broadening the scope. Mm -hmm. uh, homeless people, a lot of people sort of put on blinders to that. Um, so I'm gonna say an invisible. Invisible. Um, and, Perfect. So it's, uh, somebody, somebody with a mental disability that that kind of disassociates or something, or you know somehow affects their. Uh, let's let's go. Yeah, so like a, like a um, subjective POV sort of. Oh, let's do that. Mm -hmm. All right. You had your hand up. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, lonely in public. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. Any others? Um, s somebody who is uh, like a celebrity where people are afraid to actually engage with them. The, the, that whole sort of lonely in public syndrome where everyone just, you know, is looking at you and taking pictures of you, but nobody will actually, you know, actively engage you. Um, sure, sure. It's, um, that's a little bit more action than character, but that could lead to character in terms of if you, you know, if you know who the, like the fugitive, you know, he's a guy who's being chased, but his, you know, Dr. Richard Kimball is, is more the character, but it could be, yeah, it, it's, it's somebody who's, who's, uh, you know, on the run or something like that. Um, any others? Yeah, hiding. Hiding's, hiding's super... Super good. Somebody would. A flash. A, a flash. Like somebody flashing? Yeah. <laughs> nice. So I have a question actually about that. So if someone is, so say they can't hide, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not going to be able to hide. So how would you know Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the well, the point of this will happen in one second because um, these are going to be these are going to fold back into something. That I'll, ex I'll explain. But yeah, exactly. Like the, how you handle that is you know it, the sky's the limit in terms of uh, how you actually handle that uh, that character, the camera. Any others before we? Uh, did you list hostage? No, that's great. Hostage, torture victim, some sort of you know. Kidnappy. I'll, I'll call it hostage, but it could be totally. Is that what you were going to go for? Anybody else? All good. Maybe a small group where you're a member of like a small transition or somebody that has a small group of people. Like member of a team, but but uh, but it's sort of like a silent. That's the other caveat on this. Like we're talking about stuff in which they're not going to be able to touch anything or speak. So member of a team works, but it, you know that's uh, that's the one limiting factor of all this stuff. Um, so, like pets? pets perfect. Pet is incredible. Yeah, pet is absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would actually I would put pet slash inanimate object. Um, there's a 
somebody was just telling me there about a uh, there's a VR experience where you are the bag of cash in the middle of a like bank robbery <laughs> heist, and so like you're being passed around. Um, so it explains everything. It explains why you can't move. It explains you know like that. That is an immediate like I am the bag of cash. I'm going to go on this ride and I'm going to enjoy this. Um, so that's the kind of I'm going to say um, object. Cool. Yeah. Well, you could you can also being John Malkovich style. You can be a thought in somebody's head. So it could be you know it can be an emotion. It can be a thought. It can be somebody's sort of like. Um, disassociated mind being John Malkovich is, is all about sort of being a disassociated viewer in somebody else's uh, experience. Baby. Perfect. Yeah. Baby is, baby is similar to, um, to invalid only because it's, it's somebody that doesn't have any like agents. It's, you know, babies can't talk. They can't necessarily pick stuff up. So yes, they don't have that experience. exactly. Yeah. And they need to, totally. I'm going to put invalid slash baby. Um, uh, were there any others? That one's problematic because you can't defuse the bomb. Do you know what I mean? Like, and that's more action than character, if, if that makes sense. It's more like you could have a soccer mom or an elite Delta Force guy defusing a bomb, but it, it doesn't, it, the action doesn't define the character necessarily. So, so, sort of like through somebody's eyes at a social event kind of thing? Or, so, that might end up being a little bit, um, I'm trying to see if that clusters with anything. Eh, it's, yeah, um, sort of like social event. All right, uh, is that good? I think that's, that's kind of, oh. Yeah, the viewer is going to be an observer because the viewer doesn't have any ability to talk or touch. So it doesn't matter how you move the camera; they're still going to be an observer. So the you can have you can ha uh, Eddie's going to talk a little bit about it's a little bodies are a little problematic in pre-film stuff, and he'll explain why. Um, it doesn't have to be 360; it can be 180. Um, you know, it could be less even if you want to. Um, you know, you can like Hardcore Henry the the film that's coming out, like, you know, he's got hands and everything like that. You're sort of, but as the, as the viewer, you're always going to be a little, you're going to be passive in this stuff because you don't have hands, you don't have a voice. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And all you need to do as the creator is tell them why they're in their, why they're in that, in their head. That, that is sort of like, um, like the subjective POV or, uh, or, you know, an emotion, like that's that kind of genre of character of you're, you're sort of like a disassociated first person, somebody else's hands, somebody else's voice, somebody else's action, but you're in their head seeing through their eyes. Um, but it's totally valid. It's just all of these are, are sort of um, little easy categories that you need to write the, the, the story through. And the, the important thing to all of these is that this is the character that the camera has. That's, you don't have to start there. We're going to start there today. Like if you want to tell a bank heist film, you don't have to start with, I want to tell a story about a bag of money being passed around. That's something you can arrive at later. We're just kind of going, we're going, starting with the camera's character and going to story. But sometimes you can figure out what the camera's character is if you've already got the story in mind. So th that's worth throwing out. Um, all right, so the reason for asking that is these are going to be the prompts that we're going to use today. Each group is basically going to start with the camera is blank and uh, your genre is. So we've got, oh, come on, click, click, click. There it goes. Um, we've got four genres. These are just to kind of help structure things. If a group is just like, screw this, these are, you know, this is, this is what we want to do. Feel free to break them out. Um, we're going to, we sort of have five groups. So we're going to have you guys kind of fill in so that we have four. 
So we'll have you kind of join for the purposes. There'll be round tables, so um, come sit on, on these sides of tables. Um, so we're just gonna go, this is just total random. One, two, three, four. So one, uh, I'm gonna let you choose what the camera's character is um, from that list. And I'll have that list, I'll throw it up on the screen. So everyone, everyone can choose it. But you guys are gonna do a drama, you guys are gonna do a comedy, you guys are gonna do horror, and you're gonna do sci-fi. If you absolutely hate that, feel free to break out of that. That's totally fine. It's not the goal. It's, that's, that's a limitation to give you something to hold on to, because otherwise it's like holding sand. There's too many variables. So it at least gives you something. Um, I'll throw the list up there in a second. Um, please choose one before coming up with ideas versus trying to think of ideas on all of the possible characters. Um, it's just a structure to just get you into coming up with an idea. It doesn't have to win an Oscar. 